Some supposedly shocking, not so shocking news if you follow recent trends in the precious metals world. To start this week, there was reports out of a major airport in Toronto, Canada. It seems a major robbery of gold originally reportedly valued at nearly 100 million in fiat Canadian dollars, but was today downplayed to only 20 million in fiat Canadian dollars. Some gold ore upped and disappeared this week, perhaps stolen from a supposedly secure shipping container with an 18 wheeler. My common sense suggests surely it's an inside job with airport and logistics workers knowing mining to refining shipping routes of freshly mined or refined gold ore. Gold illiterate reporters at Bloomberg had the following coverage on this week's reported gold thievery. And then you've got this huge story here in uh, the Toronto area, more than $20 million Canadian worth of gold missing after a heist at Canada's largest airport. Let's go to Toronto's Pearson Airport to speak with CTV's John Musselman, who has been covering this dramatic tale, John, which a lot of people are comparing to movie storylines. Uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, the Goodfellas movie, the, the Tonza heist of 1978, which was a real event at JFK, there's a lot of similarities to that and what happened here. Uh, what we know is a flight, now we're learning, an Air Canada flight arrived here Monday evening. Uh, the container was removed from the aircraft and inside that container more than $20 million worth of gold and other valuables, police say. And sometime after it came off that aircraft over to a cargo facility, it disappeared. and. Police have no idea where it is, and uh, they're saying very little about this investigation. And it's just, I mean, you would, you would say, well, I, let's get some answers, John, but at the same time, this is such an unusual situation. Exactly, and I think they don't want to, uh, well, look, they didn't go public with this until Thursday, so uh, they knew about this on Monday evening. Now, there's hundreds of security cameras at any airport, uh, anywhere in the world, plus uh, cargo facilities, so they're obviously looking at that security video. They want to see if there was a, a truck leaving this area that looks suspicious, possibly. They'll be checking all of the staff at all of the uh, the airlines involved here and at the cargo facilities. You'll need access cards to get anywhere to get in and out. So they were asked yesterday, is this organized crime? Is this an inside job? Is this look professional to you? They really didn't want to tip their hat, just saying that uh, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, they're trying to find out what happened to this money, but experts we've talked to say it's most likely this money is long gone and possibly not even in the country right now. That's amazing, because if you guys ever tried to lift a gold bar, like just one of those gold bars is like really heavy. I mean, you just can't like stuff this stuff in a pocketbook and like run away. This takes like a lot of work. Um, John, just can we have an idea of like how they actually were able to move that kind of bars? Well, you hit the nail on the head. You're not going to move this stuff in a, a knapsack. This is going to take uh, probably a heavy-duty truck of some sort to move that off the property. Now, how they did that uh, without being detected, that's part of the investigation here. But anyone who's ever near an airport, you know how serious the uh, security issues are. Now, the airport here at Pearson is saying, look, this happened off of our security perimeter uh, on a road called Airport Road near Pearson, where there are cargo facilities. So, obviously, somebody was able to get information on when that flight was arriving, where that cargo was moving, and then they were able to get it out and off the property here. That's what detectives are going to try to figure out here as they go through security video, as they interview employees, all of this as they try to track this money. Hey, hey, at least the Canadian reporter at the airport called this gold robbery what it is, missing money. The precious stuff governments historically have killed for, and no, I'm not talking about some two-bit Wiley Coyote pipsqueak gold heist in airport cargo. No, I'm talking about Imperial Japan in 1937 waltzing into the capital city of China, committing unspeakable atrocities in front of Western witnesses, and then marching out of the then Chinese capital city of Nanjing with an estimated 6,600 metric tons of gold bullion. Over 212 million troy ounces, valued at over 424 billion in fiat US dollar today. Straight up got jacked in a few month war campaign. But that's another history lesson that you've likely never been taught and another story for another day. Let's get back to the present and begin with the fiat gold price adjusted by 10 major fiat currencies according to their GDP market share. Milton W. Berg, certified financial analyst, tweeted this key weight adjusted gold price chart for those who seemingly never bothered to take off their green colored fiat US dollar tinted glasses, especially when thinking about the vast majority of the rest of the gold buying world. Well. 
There's this stupid triple top technicians keep talking about when they're looking at the gold price chart in Fiat USD, but on this chart, um, breakout. Now bear with me, we're about to run through 13 full fiat currency era price charts for 13 major fiat currencies around the world with gold on the left, silver in the center, and platinum prices on the far right. Chances are high by the end of this, you too will see that as typical and during a building secular bullion bull market mania, gold leads, silver follows, and platinum also eventually gaps higher too. We begin with our very own green colored fiat US dollar glasses on if you will. These are yearly price charts, so a red bar signifies a down year, a blue bar a positive year, and nominal price gains. Of course, in an increasingly smoke-filled fiat financialized world over the last 53 years or so, what matters most for gold, silver, and platinum bulls is gains in real value terms, not merely fiat number go up. Here we see far left gold and fiat US dollars beginning its long-awaited breakout in the year 2023. In the center, we see fiat US dollar silver price still has to get to the mid 30s an ounce before real upside excitement can begin. While far right, platinum still has a long way to yet climb to get back toward the high levels hit during the late 2000s commodity boom and the 2011 dead cat bounce. Moving on to the land down under, the fiat Aussie dollar gold price is basically saying see you later. While fiat Aussie dollar silver is beginning to come along for the gold led ride, here you can also see the fiat Aussie dollar platinum price. The build to an eventual breakout is closer than many might know. Moving to our real estate bubble neighbors up north, the fiat Canadian dollar gold price is also headed north. While silver builds momentum to break out sooner or later, the fiat CAD price of platinum appears to be also building momentum of late. Onwards to the fiat Swiss franc, a once proud and final gold backed now full fiat currency since the mid 70s. Gold there too is starting to break out. Swiss silver has miles to go, basically left for dead, cheap, but ready to follow gold in time. And finally, Swiss platinum consolidates sideways priced well off, still from its 2008 high levels. Onwards to gold and platinum gobbling China, the fiat yuan renminbi gold price also beginning to break out. Chinese silver still has work to do, and relatively cheap platinum has been bought like crazy by the Chinese authorities since the pandemic 2020 era as they move to more hydrogen powered cars and energy systems, as well likely thrifting out more expensive palladium with platinum. Onwards to the European Union as the fiat euro watches its gold price take off up a wall, with the fiat euro silver price following suit building momentum, and platinum and fiat euros doing similar work. A similar story also in the once dominant Great British, not an empire any longer, United Kingdom. The fiat pound gold price you see here, it's obviously moving higher. The fiat silver pound price also poised to follow and the fiat platinum pound, not sterling price, creating a potential cup and handle U-shape to come. Next we go to India, where the fiat gold rupee price is becoming more and more unaffordium for average Indians seemingly by the year. We can see the fiat rupee silver price is about to remind people why it's often nicknamed poor man's gold. And the fiat rupee platinum price has made a cup and handle shape on this yearly price chart already. Next to the land of the rising sun, Japan with the eventual unwinding of the long running fiat yen carry trade unfolding. Fiat yen price gold is saying sayonara or as people from the US like to say sayonara. The fiat silver price in yen is starting to show signs of a move. But if we look back at its mammoth local 1980 high, we realize it's still cheaper than dirt on the landlocked island that is Japan. Finally, the fiat platinum yen price locally, a country that consumes a lot of platinum industrially and for jewelry, the technicals there look increasingly bullish to my eyes. Down south, we go to Mexico where local fiat peso strength of late has stalled moves in all three major precious metal prices locally. Take advantage, Mexican friends, that won't last. Next to New Zealand, we see a similar trend like we saw on the fiat Australian dollar price charts for gold, leading silver building momentum and platinum looking like it wants to cup handle build. Second to last chart, we're going to move to the Russian Federation. The fiat ruble price of gold has stabilized after whipsawing during the Ukraine invasion just over a year ago. Basically all three price charts trending up and to the right. And finally, the fiat South African Rand, gold, silver, and platinum prices all foretell 
where everyone else in both emerging and developed economies, where they're all heading long term. Higher and to the right, with many, many more positive blue bars to build in the years coming. I suppose the one takeaway for this gold, silver, and platinum fiat currency price chart drive-by shooting is that fiat currencies by design, when given enough time, every single silly fiat currency is going to bow in real value to precious monetary and industrial metal stores of value over time. So I suppose plan accordingly. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these Bullion market updates and share it with those who might find the information valuable. Also, be sure to enter our free Monster Box sweepstakes. Want to win 500 Silver Eagle coins just like this guy? Yeah, this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. I'm calling to you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Monster Box of 2022 Silver Eagle. Unbelievable. That is awesome. <laughs> so click the link below for your chance to win. Good luck to all of you out there who enter our free 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin giveaway sweepstakes. Both silver and gold spot prices in fiat US dollars fell slightly for the week's trading. The spot silver price in fiat USD closes just over 25 an ounce, while the spot gold price in fiat US dollars finished the week just under the key 2000 per troy ounce level. The spot gold silver ratio closed flat at 79. A little bit of USA bullion industry rumor to start. I'm catching word that the US Mint is now taking orders from distributors for 24 karat, 49 fine, one ounce gold buffalo coins. So what inventory of gold buffalo coins is out there will likely be it for the coming while. Or in short, expect premiums on what inventories that remain to rise further in comparison to ongoing gold spot prices. While the gold buffalo coin is a much smaller and typical mintage number when compared to the 22 karat one troy ounce content containing American gold eagle coin. But even the more popular 22 karat gold coin, you can bet premiums on them will also likely move higher as this inventory diminishment news spreads. The U.S. Mint is currently on pace to break gold bullion coin sales records in fiat U.S. dollar terms. Of course, they continue shortchanging the one ounce silver eagle bullion coin market, so much so that it seems to now trade as a high premium silver collectible, more so than a silver bullion coin. Now we currently may be nearing another decent arbitrage moment for selling some one ounce ASCs and converting the proceeds into lower premium silver bullion products for overall troy ounce gains. Now onwards to the Silver Institute's publishing this week of the World Silver Survey 2023 with updated silver industry data through 2022 and some likely predictions that will again turn out to be incorrect. First, let me hand the next few minutes off to Indian Silver CNBC TV18 News journalist Manisha Gupta as she covers some basics from the report. So now I'm looking at the silver prices because we are trading very close to those one-year highs. The one-year high has been at around uh, 25.8. So even with that half a percent of a correction, we're not too far away from those kind of levels. The support comes in on the fact that you are looking at strong demand going forward. But the price is first, and we have seen 2.5% of decline on a week-on-week -week basis, and that shows on the prices. But on a month-on-month -month basis, we still are 13% on the higher side here. There is a World Silver Survey that got released yesterday from the International Silver Institute, and that says that the demand in the previous year was 18% higher at a record 1.24 billion ounces. They also go on to say that the demand has been strong across sectors. So whether it has been about jewelry, industry, physical coins and bar buying, all of that saw a double digit growth on a year on year basis in the markets there. This is the third straight year that we are looking at a global deficit as well. And that, uh, that data should tell you that. So when you look at the last couple of years, we've seen supply at just about 1,005 million ounces, while the demand has been much higher in both consecutive years. This year as well, even as we are looking at supply going on the higher side, the demand also is on the higher side and that is going to keep the prices in support. So it's not just about artifacts and jewellery that is on strong demand, but the industrial demand from the solar industries and automotive also has been increasing there. So this is a, the, the next picture should show you the global deficit that we are working with now. So 2021 was 51 million ounces of a deficit. Last year was a huge 237 million ounces of a deficit. And this year we are working with 142 million ounces of a deficit yet again. 
So when you look at the fundamentals, they are way supportive for silver prices from here on. In the Indian markets as well, we're trading at around 75,000 rupees per kg with expectation that could you could be looking at higher prices. So these are the average prices that we've seen in the last couple of years with the expectation that the average price this year could be at around 21.3. We already are trading at around 25.5 right now with an expectation that if 26 breaches, then you're looking at 28, even $30 per ounce on the higher side for the silver prices. So bullish going for this one. Okay, first thing to remember when reading this 88-page report is the World Silver Survey's track record for guessing incredibly wrong. To start last year, 2022, they guessed that for the year, the silver supply deficit would only be negative 20 million an ounce. Well, they missed the record-sized nearly negative 240 million ounce deficit that hit the market last year, and that's by a factor of nearly 12x they missed. Now, if that was your job to make accurate forecasts and that was your miss, well, you likely wouldn't have a job anymore. Also, remember that this report is written by Metals Focus, a City of London-based consultancy that surely has no incentives or friends in the City of London that are hoping that they will try and pour cold water on an otherwise red-hot silver demand and potential periphery readership thinking about getting involved. They claim that the Fiat Fed is not likely to have reason to cut rates by the end of this year, 2023, and they even guess the coming silver deficit of 142.1 million ounces for this year in the global silver market, that with that, spot prices will flounder to the low 18ths before the year end of 2023. Well, with that guess, I mean, you might have to suggest massive deflation cometh and further bank failures because otherwise I, I find that guess dubious. We see spot 18 again. You can very well bet bullion prices are going to be mid-20s to nearly 30 an ounce and even the low premium products as demand continues outstripping coming available supplies. Probably the best part of the World Silver Survey 2023 report was working out how ridiculous the silver derivative leverage was and that was applied last year in order to keep silver spot prices in polite check. Notionally, there was over $6 trillion in silver derivatives futures contracts that were traded globally around the world last year in 2022, dwarfing the physical silver market for the year to the tune of over 227 times in notional value, derivatives versus physical. That right there, that's the math. You can press pause and do it yourself if you'd like to confirm my claim. Now finally, to close this week, I see that Knight Frank was out confirming that high net worth Indians, I believe they define them as Indians or any high net worth person with over 30 million in fiat US dollar estate wealth. Well, surprise, surprise, them and other wealthy investors around the world have been increasing their allocations to gold as the positive price rising feedback loop begins. High net worth Indians have about 6% allocated to gold, while wealthy Austrians have the highest allocations at 8% in gold. It seems many of the wealthy in Britain and Australia have a measly 2% allocation as they get front run by Eastern Central Banks buying gold bullion in volumes not seen since before World War II. And lastly, fiat financialized wealthy in the USA, South Korea, Italy, and Ireland have a measly 1% gold allocation again, while the gold price in virtually every one of those local economies is about to blow off into an undeniable secular bull run for the ages. Well, I guess these weak allocators to gold get to pay through the eye later on. Good luck if bullion goes vanishing in a financial crisis and enjoy your underperforming derivatives and risk-laden mining shares because that's pretty much all you're going to have as an option. For anyone watching who knows the real value game being played here on the long term, I suggest you front run these under allocated low history knowing flock and get prudently positioned before they come scrambling in on a fear of loss trade the likes of which the world has not collectively seen all at once at the same time. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always, to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Thank you.